this week's lessons on the heart. How is the structure of the heart related to its function? You've got a question which says, how much blood does the human body contain? So you could have a think about that, write down a number, and then the number will be revealed in a moment. Make sure you pay attention to units and add a unit after the number that's given. So have a go. If you pause, the answer then will be shown shortly. 5.6 litres. So if you've got a number around that, that's a good start. If not, you know this for future reference. The heart, where is it located? It's located between the two lungs. Hopefully you should know that. Enclosed by the pericardium. The pericardial fluid is secreted between them to aid movement. The pericardium protects the heart from overexpansion. So you do have at the bottom right the heart, so it's showing you that the pericardium protects the heart from overexpanding. The pericardium is the double layer of tissue that surrounds the heart, and the pericardial is the membrane that surrounds the heart. So these will be new words. Hold your hand in front of you and make a fist. This should represent the heart. Squeeze and relax and see how long you can do this for. Again, this is an optional activity, but it may give you a helping hand as to how the heart works. The walls of the heart are made of cardiac muscle, which is the myocardium. It's only found in the heart. It never tires, but can tolerate lack of O2. O2 is oxygen. So you've got the walls of the heart, which are made of cardiac muscle, which is also known as the myocardium. And you've also got it here as well. We're going to look at some of the internal features of the heart. You've got the pulmonary valve, the tricuspid valve, the right ventricle and left ventricle, the right atrium and the left atrium, the aortic valve, the mitral valve. We will look at the external features, which some are covered and already labelled on here, but we'll look at them later on through the slides. Watch this video, Blood Flow Through the Heart. If you're watching via MP4 file, you'll need to access the PowerPoint file to click on the link. You can also have a think about the question, how far does your blood travel in one day? So have a think, pause, write down how far. Again, try and include units if possible. Nearly 12,000 miles. So that was the answer. Here's some more information about the heart and how the blood flows through the heart. Blood comes into the heart from the body. It then has to pass to the lungs to collect oxygen. This is called a double circulatory system. After it returns to the heart, it leaves again to be transported to the body. This is a flow diagram that shows where it travels on the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart. The atrium receives blood from veins and the ventricle pumps blood into arteries. So you can have a look through that in each part and what occurs. As stated earlier, we'd say we looked at the external features of the heart. So you can have a look and do a comparison between internal and external think are there any discrepancies so are some shown on the external and shown on the internal so have a look go through some of the key points and then you can make a note if necessary
So if you were in school, um, you may have been given chance to have a look at a heart dissection. Um, hearts are normally gained from butchers. So in terms of heart dissection, this is not for the faint-hearted. So if you feel that it will make you a bit squirmish, feel free to quickly go through the video or skip this part of the PowerPoint. But it is important because you get to see the different parts of the heart and more so inside and how it works. You've got a key question. So again, if you're not going to look at the heart dissection, definitely have a go at this question. How many times does the heart beat in a lifetime? So write a number down, have a think of what you think it may be. And then I'm going to reveal the answer in a couple of seconds. Around 35 million times. So make sure what I said earlier about adding units. If you place a number, just add the unit now. This shows a really good heart dissection clip. So click on the YouTube clip. If you're watching this in the MP4 file, you will need to access it from the PowerPoint because then you can click on it. With this, it just allows you to see in detail we've actually been done. And then the slides that follow this just show you in more detail what it looks like inside, just in a bit more detail and a bit more description of what's going on in each part. On the screen is a pig's heart. What external features can you identify? So you've got A, B, C, D, E and F. Try and see if you can do it from memory, potentially. Um, if not, as I said, you can just move on and we'll go through some of the key points that you'd see in a heart dissection. You can also have a go at how much blood does the heart pump in a lifetime. So again, Try and write down your number and write down a unit. I'll give you a couple of seconds and then we'll look at the answer. This slide shows you external features, the front and the back. So again, you can pause it if you're on video form or if you're in the PowerPoint, you can leave it on here for a moment. Just have a look. Are there any differences from front and back? This slide shows that the heart being intact, meaning it hasn't been cut apart yet. So it shows the heart from the front with the portion on the right of the picture being the left side of the heart and vice versa. The aorta is clearly visible at the top with an atrium on either side while the ventricles are in the bottom left. first incision is along the right ventricle, just here. The right ventricle can be identified by squeezing the heart, since the myocardium on the right hand side is much less rigid than that of the left ventricle. This allows us to see the tricuspid valve and the right ventricle outflow tract, which includes the pulmonary valve. Longitudinal cut. The right ventricle has now been cut open, as you can see here, and it was cut open from the bottom towards the top. In this picture, the myocardium is being held back. The finger is stuck underneath one leaflet of the tricuspid valve, which leads to the pulmonary valve. The tricuspid valve up close. The tricuspid valve allows blood to flow from the right atrium into the right ventricle. When the heart is contracting, the pulmonary valve is open because the blood pushes the cusp out of the way. After contracting the ventricles, they begin to relax and the pulmonary valve closes and prevents backflow. So it doesn't allow the blood to go back, which is called regurgitation, into the ventricle. The 
left ventricle, this longitudinal incision extends from the bottom to the top of the left ventricle, then continues up into the atrium to allow us to view the entire left heart. The mitral bicuspid valve. So the mitral valve prevents blood from flowing back into the left atrium. The mitral valve is positioned between the atrium at the top and the ventricle at the bottom. Left ventricle outflow. Blood flows into the ventricles by passing through the mitral valve. But can you see where it flows out? Most of you used to think that the blood flows out where the tweezers are at the top or you may look at the bottom, but this is a bit of a trick question because the outflow track is hidden be behind the mitral valves. This diagram shows the circulatory system. The key is showing you deoxygenated blood and then showing you oxygenated blood. These slides go more in depth about the heart. So we're going to start off with valves prevent backflow when the pressure in ventricles exceeds that in the atrium, the bicuspid and tricuspid valves shut. This makes the first noise we hear with a stethoscope. Tendinous cords attached to papillary muscles prevent valves turning inside out. Semilunar valves prevent backflow in the pulmonary artery and dorsal aorta. Closure of these makes the second noise of the heartbeat Hence, dog, dog. The heart requires a lot of oxygen and nutrients. Some oxygenated blood leaving the left ventricle goes directly to the heart through the coronary arteries. These branch many times to supply oxygen and nutrients throughout the cardiac muscle. When these get blocked, a heart attack is likely and bypass surgery required. An examined question has come up on this, so it's really important that we just go through it. Cardiac output. Cardiac output equals stroke volume, so that's the volume of blood leaving left ventricle with each beat, which is times the heart rate, which is beats per minute. So an average resting for a man is 75 centimetre cubed, so that would be the stroke volume, and 70 beats per minute, which is the heart rate. When exercising, both stroke and rate increase. So the fitter the person is, the lower the resting rate and the higher the stroke volume. So that's a very key point to remember when a key question like this comes up. Heart rate is measured by the pulse. As the heart beats, it releases regular surges, so that increases the volume of blood. As these pass along the arteries, the vessel must stretch to allow it to pass. This stretching pushes on the skin, which we sense as a pulse. So you can do that by attempting to take your pulse at one point. 